So what's inside this little black box they call a blower motor transistor? We're going to take a look at it today and uh, give you the option on uh, repairing it yourself. These have become more common in, uh, after 2001, 2002 when they started to go to more automated heating and uh, air conditioning systems. They started to integrate uh, their control units that control your uh, heating and uh, your ventilation systems. And in order to do that, since these systems, these microcontroller systems work on milliamps and you're trying to interface it with a blower motor that works on amps, up to about 15 amps on the uh, Honda Civic, which this, these two units came out of, this being your heater control unit and this your blower motor transistor. And essentially what it does is communicates the information that you uh, input on the dial and uh, controls the uh, current through your uh, blower motor, which essentially is the main function of the uh, blower motor transistor. So we're going to take a look at it and uh, get a little, little bit more in detail of what it does and how it does it. Uh, these go uh, at your Honda dealers. I've seen them as high as $96 and as low as uh, $13 on eBay. Uh, the, however, they average about $30, $40 from your local um, auto shop. So we'll open it up and let's take a look at and see what's inside. So let's take a look at the wiring diagram and get a little bit more familiar with uh, what's inside this uh, blower motor transistor. The main component which actually controls the current is this transistor it's actually a MOSFET, a metal oxide field effect transistor. And this is where the blower motor is connected to this side, grounds on this side. And this controls the current through your blower motor, which uh, via that control of current controls the uh, speed of the blower motor. This side is the actual interface where it interfaces with the microcontroller unit. This is where the microcontroller unit sends a voltage signal to the uh, gate of the uh, MOSFET and this MOSFET has a threshold voltage, they call it a threshold voltage it's between 0.8 and 2 volts for this particular uh, transistor and uh, when it reaches the threshold that's when the current starts to flow, it essentially turns on, this is actually a switching we're actually switching a switching device, it's acting as a switch but in its bias range, it actually, they have it, it's called a, a omatic range. And in that range, the way this is biased with the uh, biasing resistors, it actually acts as a resistor, a variable resistor, by varying the voltage here at the gate. We vary the resistance of the channel, and via that, the conduction and the current through the blower motor. So basic, this is the main component inside. It has a few capacitors, uh, low wattage resistors, it has a thermal cutoff. And normally this has been what's been failing in the unit of this uh, thermal cutoff. It's set at 114C. Uh, when the temperature reaches that, uh, this essentially opens up. It has some fusing material inside and at a given temperature that uh, fuse breaks inside and uh, this opens. So when you normally read a resistance, you try to read from pin 1 to pin 2, you'll get an open because of that. And that's normally what's been failing. Not the transistor uh, it, itself. It's been the uh, thermal cutoff which usually giving us the most problems. But that's what it is. There's not very much in there. If you take a look, we'll open it up. And you can see the uh, resistors and capacitor there, and then your transistor itself sits here in the bottom. It's connected to the heat sink, also your thermal cutoffs on the heat sink, so it can actually sense the temperature of the, uh, the heat sink. And that transistor uh, dissipates a lot of uh, heat, so we're going to take a look at that too. That's your thermal cutoff, and what some people have done is they've uh, put a 1 ohm resistor or just uh, jumper or solder to wire from here to here and that will work this thing will work if you do that you can just jumper that to that but uh, there's no protection as far as heating if this uh, transistor were to fail 
and overheat. Uh, you could uh, melt down a, a part of your ducking, uh, but it, that's a safety feature to keep this thing from overheating. So that's why that's not really a fix. It is short between uh, that and you're essentially bypassing a safety feature of your transistor and on your automobile. Uh, you actually have seen that and actually some people have ran a wire to here to a switch uh, external so they can turn the thing on and off. So it's all kinds of trick ways to do it, but that's not the way to do it. It's a simple enough part to just replace. And I've seen some people try to solder it instead of opening this thing up, solder it between here and there. But that's defeating the purpose of that uh, thermal resistor. The body of that thermal resistor or thermal few thermal cutoff is supposed to be directly on the heat sink so it can sense how much heat the transistor is dissipating. So that's where it needs to be. It actually needs to be physically in the, uh, on the uh, heat sink. We can break down this uh, blower motor transistor essentially into one component. And that component is the transistor itself. Essentially, that's all this is. All the rest of this stuff is mostly supporting CAS. This acts as a heat sink to dissipate heat. These are the supporting resistors, transistors, or uh, transistors actually at the bottom, thermal cutoff. But essentially what this does is functions as a driver for a microprocessor. The microprocessor can only handle uh, maybe at max 50 milliamps of current. Whereas over here on this side, in order to control that fan, we're talking about maximum of 15 amps as opposed to 50 milliamps or 50 times 10 to the negative third amps. So there's a big difference and then normally that's what the microcontroller does. It interfaces with sensors and drivers and changes analog signal to digital and digital back and forth. So when you make a, an adjustment here on the knob to change your fan speed, it reads the position, the analog position of the switch, digitizes it, sends it out, and converts that to a voltage that goes through another driver to drive uh, the gate of the, uh, the, uh, the transistor. And essentially, if we can actually simulate or actually give this, this essentially, if we look at the uh, transistor itself as three gates or three leads, a gate, a source, and a drain, uh, the microprocessor sends a signal voltage signal to the gate which puts a positive charge on the gate pulls in free electrons into this silicon dioxide insulator on this side of it and those become negative ions as they fill in the holes into this p-type material and as it becomes more and more positive we bring in more and more electrons right into this channel here at this point right up against this metal oxide and we have current flow from source to drain and the more positive the more current flows essentially we can we can the controller acts as a variable voltage source so this is essentially our microcontroller unit this is our battery, our 12 volt battery. And this is our fan. So as the microcontroller varies the voltage, more positive, more current flows, fan turns faster. Essentially this is our circuit, 12 volts on one side of the fan, which is always hot, looking for ground on the ground side via the uh, transistor. So in a nutshell, that's how it works. We're, we're essentially, as an insulated gate, it's, it's exactly what you want when you're dealing with a low current device, a microcontroller unit interfacing with the real world, which is operating at a higher level, higher voltages, and higher current levels. It's essentially isolated, so that's exactly what you want. That's why they actually use this 
insulated gate technology or the MOSFET is because it has a very high input impedance, which requires only very low current to drive it, drive this driver. And essentially that's what it actually is, a motor driver. What you'll need for this task is a soldering iron, solder, and a means of desoldering. Either there's some solder wick for desoldering, uh, the uh, portable desoldering tool, little vacuum pump, or a desoldering gun. And you'll also need some heat uh, silicon heat compound to uh, go around your transistor once you mount it back into the case. Uh, silicon heat sink thermal dielectric compound. You can find those at electric shop, electric electronics or Fry's Electronics. But uh, to uh, help uh, with the heat transfer, flux will always be help. You have the, either have the water soluble flux or the normal fluxes that you can use to help with the soldering, and some alcohol or uh, or or lacquer thinner that you can use to remove some of the flux from the board and kind of clean up. So let's open this black box up and uh, replace some parts. Uh, i got a small slot screwdriver. And the holes here, little slots, twist. Should come right off. And we're ready to take desolder some of the components here. Get some safety glasses on. Take a look at what we got. Thing's been uh, in here for a while, so I'll put a little flux on it to make this probably a little easier. This is a water-based flux. On the th uh, one, two, three, four, five points, we have to uh, desolder. Get the iron here. One way we can do this is uh, with the old solder wick. Lock up uh, the solder here. See if we can get it to wick in. There it goes, wicking into the uh, okay, that one fell right off there. We move up. Well, that one came off. We'll take this one off here too with the solder wick. We want to heat the uh, solder wick and then in turn heat the uh, connection and see how it just wicks in there. Let me move it along. It came out pretty good there. Give it a little push. That one actually broke off there. But it came out. And another way we can do that, let's see, we're going to use a, a little vacuum here. These here at the top are uh, pretty big ones here. Let's see, this is a little another way to do it. Also have the uh, old solder sucker, that was another way. This one's a little bit faster if you have a lot of these to do. And this one's got a lot of solder in it. And done. That's a little quicker, especially if you have a lot of them to do. And that just pops right off there. That one actually broke off. And there's our component. There's our uh, thermal cutoff. It's held down on this screw. Let me get a good screwdriver to get that out. See what we got here. Maybe this will work here. Oh, the one actually on this one here too. And that'll come right out. And that holds 
holds down the uh, thermal cutoff, and this is all the heat sink. Kind of helps transfer the uh, heat. A uh, little uh, compound there. And here's our unit here. We're going to uh, make sure when you do take this out, it's just to uh, kind of look, keep that bent like that. When we put the new one in, we're going to try to bend it the same uh, at the same elbows and this one too. So when we put it back in, it'll be easier to uh, put this board right in. So we're going to clean this up a little bit. Uh, yeah, actually, we could just add a little bit more heat sink compound. And uh, uh, the more the, you don't want to get a lot of it in there, but it's it's, it's not going to hurt anything. Helps to uh, transfer the heat uh, from the from the uh, transistor uh, to the heat sink. So uh, we'll get the new component and we'll bend it in, we'll put it in, and we'll solder it uh, back in and we'll be uh, ready to uh, go. Okay, we're ready to start uh, with the uh, reinstall. We have the new components here. We have the old. First thing we'll do is we'll bend this uh, kind of similar to the one that came out. Yeah, it looks like it's about right, uh, right about there. Looks like that'll do it. So if I bring, uh, bend these two at the same time, it's about right there. Right there, and look at this one, it's bent pretty close, so it'll go about right there, too. And we'll go about right there and bend it. Looks like that's pretty similar. We're going to use the Hilla, this helps with the transfer of heat, silicon heat sink. You can buy this at uh, Fry's Electronics or one of the uh, electronic stores that should have it. It sells soldering supplies and things like that. So we'll spread it around here. We'll get some on the uh, semiconductor itself, the transistor. Make sure we get a nice good heat transfer. That's a little lot there, but well, well, it won't hurt anything. And looks like that she needs to go back a little farther where we can get the screw in. Yeah, let me see if we're uh, and we'll get some on this guy here too. That's going to go there. I think that's enough to go all the way through. Got our flow going. Ah, didn't have enough uh, lead on solder there. flow through. Looks like that's okay. Take a look at it. Yeah, looks like we yeah, did we miss no we got that all the way through. Like that's good. We'll uh, get our water cutters there, and uh, there were the clippers there. Okay. Get 
tips. That's water-based flux we were using, so it should come right off with some more, a little bit of alcohol. Pick up a little bit of alcohol here. New transistor, a uh, new uh, thermal cutoff. Should click right back in. And it says also a, a note, uh, you see how we uh, mounted the uh, transistor right onto the heat sink? The actual uh, drain is the same connection as the, uh, as the uh, case. So right now when you plug it in, you see you have 12 volts on the, uh, the uh, drain. You actually have 12 volts also on the heat sink. They're the same electrical connection. So the uh, body or the drain is connected to the body of the transistor and the body of the transistor is connected to the heat sink. So they're at the same potential. So there you have it. You have the option of repairing it yourself or you just go out and buy a replacement, uh, whichever works best for you. Uh, remember to check out my uh, troubleshooting video on blower motors on the Honda Civic in the description section and also all the documentation that we've went through here uh, is available at a download link in the description. Take care.